So now that I'm back here at the fifth wheel, uh, if you didn't get a chance to see the video where I made this little $25 setup to provide easier access to connect to your battery in your coach, I'm going to go ahead and install this. Go ahead and watch that video first because you'll understand why I'm doing this. But this is going to be a really simple installation. Basically, all I'm going to do is wire the red into the battery connect terminal and wire the black to chassis ground. And it's going to give me a quick connect plug to attach uh, closer and more conveniently to the outside of the fifth wheel so I can connect jumper cables if I need to power the coach for whatever reason. Let's say the truck's not here and I have a backup battery, or let's say I'm in a situation where the coach battery is dead and it won't let me do anything with my landing gear. This is really going to help me out and it shouldn't take too long to install, so follow me along. So first thing is first, make sure the battery to the rig is turned off to the rig itself. That way you don't have the chance of causing any kind of a surge or just any issue. So it's, it's always good to disconnect the battery or turn the power off before you do something like this. This isn't going to take any time at all, and it's really not dangerous, so you don't have to worry about electrocuting yourself or anything like that. Now this red wire right here goes directly to the battery, and this wire right here goes to the disconnect switch, which is behind this panel. So this is actually what feeds power to your coach if your battery is completely dead on the coach. In some cases, this is designed to trickle charge your battery regardless of if you have your disconnect switch turned on or off. So basically while you're driving down the road if you haven't turned the power to the coach on yet. I'm going to go ahead and unscrew this terminal right here. On the adapter I made, I am going to connect my red wire right here and screw it in place. Next, I'm going to peel back my ground wire and I'm simply going to take this self-tapping screw out and mount it with the rest of these ground cables. So I have already gone and inserted my ground cable back in, and I'm just going to retighten this. There we go. All my electrical connections are made, which is just two of them. And this is ready to be connected to the top of my battery box right here. Now I'm going to use these two small self-tapping screws to go through here and connect it to the top of the battery box. I already know that I have plenty of spacing. I have a good two inches of space between the top of the battery terminal and the uh, lid right here, so I know I'm not going to make any contact by screwing into that. So now if I ever need to connect a battery or an external charger, I simply have to connect these right here and I'm good to go. Very convenient, very easy. When I'm done, unplug it. Everything's good to go. That's it. The entire installation from beginning to end out here at the RV took a total of about seven minutes. Not very long at all. And in case you're wondering, this is the setup that I actually use to air up the tires in the fifth wheel. It's a Vier 400 RV series. It's the RV series air compressor that has two extension cords like this to reach the whole rig. But instead of having to do that, I simply use my big battery jump starter, which is this Solar Eclipse HPJ 1700, 425 cranking amps. This thing is awesome. It'll start my truck like it's nothing. And then the Vier comes with this setup right here. Simply attach it. And in case you're wondering, I put between 85 and 90 pounds of pressure inside of these tires. The tires themselves are rated at 110 pounds. The wheel is rated at 80 pounds. So I usually kind of put it, like I said, about 85 to 90 pounds. I really don't need to put any more than that in these tires. Now the next thing I'm doing is installing these little LED lights. 
that are a softer white in the master bedroom basically in the two light fixtures that are right here and the whole purpose of this is because the ones that came in there those were probably the only two incandescent bulbs on this rig and i swapped them out with some other led bulbs that i had but they were too white and we wanted something that was a little softer so we're going to swap those out for these here are how the ones that are in here look they're a very white look to them and we're going to take these out and put in these and these should be a much softer white than the ones that were in here much nicer not nearly as harsh white as the ones that we just took out i'll show you there's that side and there's that side it's actually a pretty big noticeable difference much nicer much softer doesn't look nearly as sterile as the white lights that were in there really cheap upgrade i think i got all the lights for about 10 bucks for a five pack and then finally the last little inexpensive upgrade were these these were 19 dollars for a pair of them these are really nice outlet receptacles you plug in and you get two ac connections and two usb connections right now we have these little extension cords that plug in and they take up a little bit of space and i really don't like the fact that there's just a cord laying there so this will replace that that looks much nicer. Like I said, you pay 20 bucks, you get two of them. It's worth it. So that's it, guys. I'm going to batten the RV back up, pull this slide back in because I had to pull it out slightly so I could put another one of those little receptacles right there. But everything was real simple. Connecting the power backup cables, um, or that's what I'm going to call them, to the battery compartment was very simple. Connecting these little outlets, of course, was a no-brainer. And it's definitely going to add some convenience, which is always nice when you're in your RV. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you, everyone.